building the Wolverine amplifier, completing the main board. In this video, we're going to talk about where we left off, a quick test of the driver stage, some tips for success, completing the output stage, pre power on checks, first power on and biasing, and a first listen. In the last video, we finished around this point and it was time to install the driver stage and its associated components. I decided to prepare the heat sinks for the driver transistors and I'm using the 5 unit high 400mm deep UMS heat sinks from the DIY Audio store. These are pre-drilled and there is now some available specifically for the Wolverine. I encourage you to check them out on the DIY Audio store website. I did a test fit with some nice blue Wolverine boards. I used an old TO126 transistor to test fit the driver mounting holes. Perfect fit. Time to mount the spacers. Unfortunately, the 10mm spacers I chose had threads which were too long. Time to break out the Dremel. The Dremel cutoff wheel makes short work of this. Please ensure to put an M3 nut on the spacer all the way up to the shoulder first. So after you cut the thread, you can wind the nut off and it will clean up the damaged part of the thread so as not to cross thread your heatsink. I chose to lock tight the standoffs in so the PCB screws would not loosen them. Test fitting on the spacers. This allowed me to use the drill press to mark out the mounting holes I needed to drill and tap. This method gave quite precise marking for the holes I needed to drill by just gently touching the drill on the heatsink and drilling about 1mm into the surface of the heatsink with a 3mm drill. Make sure you change to a 2.5mm drill before drilling the threaded holes. I used the same technique for the driver transistor mounting, but this time using a 6mm drill, only drilling down just enough to make sure a 1mm diameter mark. Notice the marks which I'll use to centre the 2.5mm drill for the threaded holes. Okay, here's a trick to line up the holes exactly on your heatsink. Get your two and a half mil drill bit that you're going to use for the M3 fasteners. Put it in your drill truck. Bring the drill down to the bottom level and then set it in the pre-existing hole at that depth. Okay, so that drill bit's lined up with the hole. It's not tight in the, in the drill chuck yet. So I'm going to bring this down and you'll note it didn't hit the bottom. So I'll just push that down to the bottom. The drill's all the way on its bottom stop there. That's all the way down. The heat sink's where I want to be. So you just gently, the 2.5 mil drill, you don't need a mega amount of force on it. And now you're set to drill to the same depth as the other UMS holes on the DIY Audio Store heat sinks. One further tip, so, if you're a little bit uh, careful with this stuff like me, you can check that the depth is set right by lining up with the side of the heatsink, bringing the drill all the way down. And you can see I've got approximately a mil gap at the bottom there. So I'm not gonna drill through to the other side. In this case, I don't want to. So hope that helps. Don't forget the cutting fluid when drilling or tapping. You don't want your drill or tap to bind in the aluminium. A small droplet is all you need. If you're not drilling all the way through the heatsink, carefully tap the threads by hand with a taper tap and then clean out the holes and use a bottoming tap to finish off the thread. Don't forget to deburr the threaded holes by hand with a 6mm drill or similar. Clean all the oil off and check the threads. 
Compressed air helps to remove all the swarf and tapping remnants from the holes. Nice and clean and ready for use. Test fit the PCB above and check the alignment. This is the way the drivers will be mounted if you're mounting directly to the main heatsink. The boards are nearly ready for mounting apart from the output coil, fuse holders, drivers and output stage. Time for a clean. Now to make the output coil. I used a 1.25mm diameter enamelled copper wire. I mounted the coil using a 2mm aluminium spacer to set the height. You can use the PCB to mark the coil where the legs need to be. Please refer to the build guide for the amount of turns, diameter and the wire thickness required. Make sure you scrape all of the enamel off with a sharp knife before tinning the leads with solder. Here's the finished result. Doesn't this coil look nice? I chose to tin the top layer of the PCB before soldering in the coil. I chose to apply a coat of epoxy to the inside of the coil for mechanical strength and to avoid vibration under load. I used a Selly's 5 minute Araldite. You don't need much. Ensure the solder has wetted and flowed to the top and bottom of the PCB. And note the vias nearby have solder flowed through on both sides also. Make sure your terminals have good solder connections also. Don't forget to choose a feedback path to solder. Refer to the build guide about this section of the PCB. Here's the output negative feedback connection I chose to use. Here are the heat sinks we prepared earlier and these ones are for the pre-drivers. I strongly recommend the use of tight fitting shoulder washers with your insulation pads. If you're using the 2SC3503E and 2SA1831E transistors since they've got a metal back which is quite close to the mounting holes. Here's the type I used and they had to be pushed in very tightly to fit. These had to be pushed into the insulating pad hole also. After lining up the heatsink and bolting in the pre-drivers, I soldered them in including the earth lug. This should fit nicely and not touch any surrounding components. Here they are mounted, please note the ground lug. So initially I had a small piece of metal pierce the silicon pad which showed up in the continuity check from the heatsink to the pre-driver transistor legs. I replaced the insulating pad and cleaned the tiny piece of metal away which solved the issue. I then checked again to make sure there were no shorts. Here's the VBE transistor soldered to a short length of ribbon cable. I checked that the wiring was correct with my component tester. Pay careful attention to the capacitance multiplier transistors orientation. Here are the driver transistors mounted to the heatsink. Please check none of the transistor legs have continuity with the heatsink using the beeper function on your multimeter. In the previous video I mentioned that I measured and matched a few MJE340 for my VBE multiplier transistors Q103 and Q104. I only matched them because I had a few and I wanted to, so I want to mention that it's not necessary to match Q103 and Q104, but the HFE value of Q104 determines a resistor choice, so please refer to the bill of materials and the build guide for more information. The driver transistor screws are accessible from the top of the PCB, unless your capacitors are too large a diameter, like mine. I've ordered the appropriate size from the build guide now. Here's the PCB mounted with the driver soldered in. 
I put some insulating tape over Q104 VBE multiplier transistor for the time being so it's metal back doesn't short on anything while I test the driver stages. It's starting to look pretty nice. At this step I chose to check the driver stage function. It's extremely important that you read the latest build guide thoroughly and complete all of the checks before you apply power to your Wolverine amplifier if you plan to test the driver stage by itself. If these checks do not match up with what's in the build guide or what you expect to see, please, please stop and reassess your work before you power up. Please don't hesitate to ask a question in the forum thread which is linked in this video description. Having said that, I decided to do a test of the driver stage. So please refer to the build guide for the connections. This setup with minimum, minimum bias setting for the output stage gave approximately 790 millivolts across R111A and R111B in my case. Your results may vary. There is the 790 millivolts with the input stage and driver running only, I measured around 40 to 45 milliamps at idle. I was able to increase the bias voltage to ensure the VBE multiplier was functioning correctly and the VBE multiplier sets the bias spread for the output stage transistors and it's a critical part of the amplifier circuit. After checking the driver stage and VBE function, I return the bias voltage back down to a minimum. Here's a, here is the bias being set at a minimum. The CCS1, 5 volts. You know, not much DC offset there. There's the house fly. Just so you, to confirm, we're at minimum bias. Hear the click. 793 millivolts. After doing the driver stage checks in the build guide, I was happy that it was safe for the output stage transistors to be installed, so I cleaned the heatsink with isopropyl alcohol in preparation. I lined up the adhesive silicon TO3P insulating pads that I like to use. The transistors I'm using are the NJW. O281G and NJW0302G complementary pair from ON Semiconductor. I was able to get a reasonably well matched set. The legs are bent at 90 degrees at the top of the transistor legs where the legs get thicker. Here they are bolted in with very little torque applied so that I can line them up with the heatsink. Time to bolt down the board, taking care to line up all the legs through the holes. Take care tightening the cap head screws for the driver transistors. You don't need a lot of torque. Before soldering in the transistors, check every single leg does not have a short to the heatsink. Use the continuity beep function on your multimeter. This step is extremely important. I'll say it again, every transistor leg needs to be checked to make sure you do not have a short to your heatsink. Okay, time to solder all the transistor legs in. Check for shorts after soldering the output transistors in also. I chose to mount Q104 directly on top of an output transistor with an insulating pad. I would highly recommend to check you have a small amount of flow through on the board on each transistor leg to make sure you have a strong connection on each transistor leg. You can inspect the transistors from this angle. Don't go overboard here but a little flow through on each leg is okay here. At this point it's time to remove J103 to allow the output stage to work. Read the build guide section related to testing the output stage and the notes about fuses. It's extremely important that you check 
and read the latest build guide thoroughly and complete all of the checks before you apply power to your Wolverine amplifier. If these checks do not match up with what's in the build guide or what you expect to see, please, please stop and reassess your work before you power up. Please don't hesitate to ask a question in the forum thread which is linked in this video description. Well here's the whole amplifier with power applied but no bias applied yet. I carefully increased the bias until I had approximately 44 to 45 millivolts between the TP101 and TP102 test points. So follow the build guide in regards to biasing the output stage. It will draw around 1 amp cold and this will reduce to around 400 to 500 milliamps when warmed up due to the thermal compensation of Q103 and Q104 in the VBE multiplier circuit. I let the amp get to thermal equilibrium and then I reset the bias. Please follow the burn-in procedure in the build guide for how to do this step. I was really happy at this point and I wanted to play some music as you may have seen in one of my other videos a few days ago. So I checked if the amplifier worked using my signal generator and my oscilloscope and I'm happy to say all was working as expected. For my next video, I plan to take some measurements of the Wolverine amplifier. Don't forget to check out the link for the poll for a second group buy for the Wolverine PCBs. I will leave a link in the description for the poll. Please register your interest if you missed out on the first round or if you simply want more Wolverine printed circuit boards. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and don't forget the subscriber competition. I plan to draw the winner next week. Leave a comment if you want to be in the draw and leave your DIYaudio.com username in the comment section. The boards to win are pictured below. Good luck and bye for now.